Sieges are one of the oldest and most brutal forms of warfare. They involve surrounding and isolating a fortified enemy, cutting off their supplies and reinforcements, and bombarding them with projectiles and assaults until they surrender or die. Throughout history, there have been many sieges that have resulted in massive casualties, destruction, and suffering for both the attackers and the defenders. Here are some of the most brutal sieges in history. Suleiman the Magnificent fought his final battle at Sigetvar, a fortress at the edge of the Holy Roman Empire, when he was over 70 years old. The Croatian governor, Nikola Zrinski, led less than 3,000 men to resist the Ottoman siege, vowing to protect Vienna at all costs, even though they were vastly outnumbered. The siege started on August 6th, and the Ottomans failed to break through the city walls. After a month of fierce fighting, only 300 Croatians and their families were left alive. Knowing they had no chance, Zrinski ordered his men to kill their own wives and children to avoid capture. They did as he commanded, and then fought to the death, until the Ottomans finally took the city and slaughtered the survivors. But Suleiman did not live to see his victory, as he had died four days before. The battle also cost the Ottomans nearly 30,000 soldiers, which forced them to abandon their invasion. The Croatians' heroic stand, though unsuccessful, is seen by some as a key moment in Christian history, saving most of Europe from Muslim domination. The Siege of Nuremberg was one of the most horrific events of the Thirty Years' War. It involved the Swedish army, led by Gustav Adolf, and the Holy Roman Army, led by Albrecht von Wallenstein. The Swedes had retreated to Nuremberg, one of the largest Protestant cities in the world, but they did not have enough supplies to sustain themselves. The Holy Romans surrounded the city and cut off their access to food and water. Both sides suffered from hunger and disease, especially typhus. Gustav Adolf tried to break the siege by attacking the old fortress, but he failed and had to escape the city. The siege lasted almost 80 days and claimed the lives of nearly 50,000 people, mostly from disease. Ostend, in modern-day Belgium, was the site of one of history's longest and deadliest sieges during the Eighty Years' War. The city was well fortified, and the Dutch and English troops, led by General Francis Veer, hoped to resist the Spanish and Archduke Albrecht. The siege began on July 5th, and the defenders had almost 50,000 men. The Spanish had about 80,000 soldiers, mostly infantry. The siege lasted for months, and both sides resorted to treachery. Albrecht tried to use a traitor to turn some of Vere's men, but he was caught and punished. Vere was accused of tricking Spain into a fake peace talk. The Dutch and English forces gave up on September 20th, and Albrecht and his wife Isabella entered the city. Isabella cried at the sight of the ruins. The siege of Sevastopol was a long and bloody battle during the Crimean War. The British, French, and Turkish armies fought against the Russian army. They used trenches to protect themselves from enemy fire. The siege lasted for 11 months and was very hard for both sides. The Russians could not win in open combat, so they moved most of their troops to the city and dug in. They were bombarded by day and repaired their defenses by night. The winter was very cold and many soldiers died from disease, like cholera and dysentery. The French army suffered the most from the sickness. The Russians held the fortress, but had to leave the city on September 9th. The Allies entered the city and the war ended soon after. Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital, was the last and most important battle between the Aztecs and the Spanish army which was mostly made up of native people who hated the Aztecs. Hernán Cortés commanded 200,000 soldiers to attack Tenochtitlan, wanting to destroy the Aztecs and take their land and wealth for Spain. The Aztecs had almost 300,000 defenders, but the Spanish had better weapons and tactics. The Aztecs seemed to have the upper hand, but they got sick with smallpox and lost their strength. Cortés decided to bomb the city with his cannons, and he ruined almost every building until the Aztecs gave up. The siege was very short, only three months, but very deadly, especially for the city's people, who may have been half of the dead. Carthage was a powerful city before the Roman Empire. 
The Romans fought against it in three wars called the Punic Wars. The city stayed free until the Third Punic War, when the Romans attacked it directly. The Romans had more than 80,000 soldiers, led by Scipio Aemilianus. The Carthaginians had 90,000 soldiers and over 400,000 people. The siege started when the Romans rejected the Carthaginian surrender and demanded the complete destruction of the city. The Carthaginians made new weapons because they had given their old ones to the Romans and they stopped the first Roman attack. The Romans blocked the city for a long time. The Carthaginians fought back, but they failed. After three years, the Romans got into the city and killed and looted everything. They sold the 50,000 survivors as slaves. They burned down all the buildings and left. The siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD was a Roman military operation that ended the first Jewish-Roman war. The Roman army, led by future emperor Titus, surrounded and attacked the city of Jerusalem, the stronghold of the Jewish rebels. After five months of fierce fighting, the Romans breached the walls and burned the second temple, the most sacred site for the Jews. Many Jews were killed, enslaved, or exiled, and the city was largely destroyed. The most infamous siege of World War II began shortly after Hitler's surprise attack on the Soviet Union in June 1941. His army group north quickly advanced through the Baltic states and reached Leningrad, a city of over three million people and a major industrial and naval center. Hitler wanted to destroy Leningrad, but he did not want to waste his troops in a direct assault. Instead, he ordered his army to surround the city and starve it into submission. He ignored any requests for peace talks, as he had no interest in feeding the city's large population. The Germans cut off all the roads and railways to Leningrad by early September 1941, leaving only a water route via Lake Ladoga as the city's lifeline. They also bombarded the city with artillery and air raids, setting fire to many buildings and warehouses. The people of Leningrad faced not only the enemy attacks, but also extreme hunger, cold, and disease. They ate anything they could find, from wallpaper to leather, and some even ate human flesh. Yet they did not give up their city and resisted the siege for 872 days from September 1941 to January 1944. The siege was a tragedy for the Soviets. By the time the Red Army broke the blockade, about 1.5 million people had died, 